Today I'm talking to you on the topic, curse that root. Curse that root. As we round up this series today, every root of hell that has been afflicting your destiny, the power of God will break it. Every root of fruitlessness in life, the hand of God will cut it off. Every root of affliction, the power of Jesus will break it. I came to announce to you, life will never victimize you again. Mark chapter 11, 22 to 24. And Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God. Keep going. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be that removed, and be that cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Keep going. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. Amen. Now, the, the story you are seeing here started earlier and the earlier chapters of uh, uh, Mark chapter 11. Jesus is going through his, the city and he's hungry and he approached the fig tree. And the fig tree, he wanted to take some uh, fig out of it. He was hungry. And the fig tree had leaves. And they tell us that every time you see a fig tree with leaves, you know there are fruits on it. But this fig tree was having leaves. And Jesus walked up to it. And there was no fruit on it. But again, the Bible tells us that the time of figs was not. That means this is not the time of figs. So if this is not the time of figs, what business has a fig tree having leaves when there are no figs? So this fig tree, there's something strange about it. Jesus got there. He couldn't see any fig tree. And he cursed the fig tree. Couldn't see any fig, so he cursed it. And said, nobody, eat fruit of you forever. And he continued his journey. He didn't sit down to wait, wait and watch whether he would die. And the Bible said the next day when they were returning, Peter looked at the fig tree and found that it has withered from the roots. It has withered from the roots. You know, whenever you touch a root, the fruit will naturally adjust. When you touch a bad root, the fruits end. When you touch a good root, the fruit begins to blossom more. G Peter called Jesus' attention. Master, behold, the fig tree with that cursed is withered away. Peter said to Jesus, Oga, okay, uh, that tree where you cursed yesterday, it don't wither. <laughs> and Jesus said, Peter, calm down. Have faith in God. You know, when things are troubling you, even if it's a mountain that is standing on your way, if it's a devil, if it's a coronavirus, if it's any kind of distraction on destiny, he said you can speak to that mountain. You know why Jesus used the mountain? Mountain was there before a man. Mountain is God uh, said. Mountain is not made by government. It's not made by the devil. A mountain is something that God supernaturally placed there. And Jesus said, even if not God placed them, you can remove them by faith. I came today to tell you, if you can remove God, what God placed on the way by faith, you can remove what the devil placed by faith. And anything that stood on your way today, that thing will break and be cut off forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, let's get a few points and then we close this session. Number one is this. The realm you operate from will determine whether you are subject to seasons or seasons are subject to you. I want you to have that clear. The realm you operate from will determine whether you are subject to seasons or seasons are subject to you. Jesus approached the fig tree. And uh, it wasn't the time of figs. This was a wrong season to expect fruit. Brothers and sisters, we thought that has happened in the last few weeks. Is it not a wrong season to expect fruit? Why should they expect prosperity today? Why should they expect a new job today? Why should they expect breakthrough today? Why should they expect a lifting today? People are just adjusting and recovering. This is not the right season. I came to announce to you, it's a right season. It's a right season. The realm you are operating from determines whether you are subject to seasons or seasons are subject to you. I mean, can you imagine? Jesus is walking to the tree. He's expecting the tree to respect him. Because, I don't know, <laughs> Jesus is not subject to seasons. Seasons are subject to, he's operating at a realm 
We are virgins conceive. Ah uh ah. -uh. Ah uh ah. -uh. A virgin has conceived without a man. That means that the supernatural has manipulated the natural. Season has changed. Brothers and sisters, there's a realm you operate from. Natural laws are just to accommodate you. And Jesus came with natural laws adjusting to accommodate him. This is a season when men walk on water. This is a season when, I mean, <laughs> you speak and things happen. Wind and waves obey you. And an ordinary fig tree is resisting Jesus. No, no, no. Jesus, at his level, <laughs> he can't tolerate that kind of nonsense. Brothers and sisters, I am at that level. You are at that level by covenant with God. Everything in this season must accommodate you. You know, when Jesus came in Luke chapter 5 to the riverside and met Peter there, and Peter complained, he said, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Jesus looked at Peter and said, Oga Peter, <laughs> calm down. Whenever I appear, seasons, seasons are just to accommodate me. All Jesus did was sit on the boat of Peter and finish preaching and say to Peter, now cast your nets on the right side and take a draught of fish. Why? That I am here now. The season of stagnation has been terminated. A new season has come in. I speak into your life by the mantle of grace put upon me that seasons have adjusted for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the best of God has begun for you right now. Zatolo akapra inkatea, negedian talado shata, lekia prako tolakatea. Right now, let things adjust to accommodate you. In Elisha told Jehoram, he said, you will not see rain, you will not see wind, but the whole valley shall be filled with water. I came today to tell you, even if there's no rain, even if there's no wind, even if there's no market, even if nothing has worked for anybody, and people are saying there's a casting down right now, let the seasons adjust for you. Let favor speak for you. Let a new job come for you. Let promotion come for you. Let turnaround come for you. I speak right now that you will take off and run with speed beyond what you even imagine by a season change from the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Second point I want you to realize is this, that the response of Jesus to any issue is an indicator of how heaven views that issue. The way Jesus responds to an issue tells you how heaven views that issue, how heaven responds to that issue. When Jesus came there and saw the fig tree, and so it was fruitless. Jesus was really very mad. Please listen to me. He was angry. You know, I say to the church some time back, if anybody can walk up to Odara tree in April, that is not an Odara season, and look up and doesn't see Odara, and gets angry, and begins to curse the Odara tree, it's either the man is mental, or there's something that man knows that you and me don't know. Jesus knows that in his level of oppression, seasons are just to accommodate him. And Jesus also knows at his level of oppression that fruitlessness is anathema to heaven. I want you to know, no matter what is happening, whether it's season or not season, you can be fruitless. You can be fruitless. Jesus is the express image of the Father. Jesus reveals how the Father thinks. If Jesus looked at a fig tree that was not producing fruit outside of season and is angry, let me tell you this. God expects you as a Christian to produce fruit in season and out of season. Listen, anything that can, anything that can make God angry enough to curse is a critical issue. Anything. Anything that is not working according to his eternal plan is critical to him. Fruitlessness makes God angry. And I see you being fruitful. You know, listen, God's plan and human realities may not be the same. But God's plan is meant to trump human realities. Human realities is, are not meant to violate God's eternal purpose. Let me show you a few things that makes God angry enough to fight. The first one is anything that represents an overreach of hell. When Satan begins to overreach, God gets angry. Why was Jesus 
angry at fruitlessness because fruitlessness is an overreach of hell. And please hear me. If you are somebody believing for the fruit of the womb, as you are hearing me now, let the hand of God touch you. Receive your children. You know why I'm telling you that? There was no curse in the Bible at the fall of man for anybody to be barren. Not one. Barrenness is an overreach of the devil. And today, I overrule him in your case. In the name of Jesus Christ. How do you know, pastor? Well, when man sinned, God could have said to Eve, you are not going to give birth to a child. And the human race would have ended at that. And sin issue have been sorted out eternally. But God said, I will recover man. But woman, in pain, you will give birth. So that means you're going to give birth. But in pain. So Satan saying to you, you can't give birth. is an overreach. And that goes, gets God angry. When Jesus saw that fig tree, he knew it was an overreach of hell. I speak over you today. Every area Satan has overreached in your life, I turn it around for you. In the precious name of Jesus. Secondly, anything that represents a rebellion to divine covenants makes God angry. Is there anything that's representing a rebellion to the covenants you believe in? The covenant of there shall be no laws. The covenant of healing and health. The covenant of prosperity. The covenant of preservation and protection. The covenant of uh, being above only and never beneath. Everything that represents the covenants of God. God backs up his covenant. He said to you, my covenant will I not break. Nor alter the things that have gone out of my mouth. Anywhere Satan is tampering with your covenant. I cast his power in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Another thing that makes God angry is anything that tampers with eternal purposes. Anything that tampers with his plan and program and purpose. I want you to hear today. Anything that wants to wipe away what God planned for you in 2020, I curse it in the name of Jesus. Nothing will tamper with God's plan. Nothing will tamper with his purpose for your life, for your business, for the church, for your family. I speak right now, restoration of destiny in the name of Jesus. What makes God angry? The fourth thing that makes him as angry, anything that tempts us to seek solution outside of God, it makes God angry. Listen to me. When people suffer too long and there's no solution, they are tempted to seek help outside of God. Anything that can keep a man in pain for too long is, cannot be of God. God said this light affliction is for a season. Light affliction for a season. Not heavy affliction for a lifetime. No, no. It's a light affliction for a season. That's all God can allow for the righteous. Any time it becomes a heavy affliction and continues perennially. It's not of God. So that delay in pregnancy is not of God. That delay in marriage is not of God. That delay in receiving your job is not of God. That long time stagnation is not of God. That downward trend in business is not of God. I stand here today as one carrying the oil of God and I command that yoke, break in the name of Jesus. I speak life over you. I cast the root of that evil. Let the hand of God intervene. Let the presence of God step in. Let the blessing of God reach you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. It brings me to the third point. Many of the contradictions of life are not coincidental. They are sponsored by mysteries. Anytime you see contradictions in life, many of them are not coincidental. They are sponsored by mysteries. Listen to me. Whatever has happened in this season, there are powers of darkness. We care spirits in helplessness that back them up. What is going on in your family, going on in your business, there are powers of darkness. There are wicked spirits in high places that are backing them up. <laughs> hear me now. Not every tree is a tree. No, 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 no. I mean, this one is a tree that Jesus is conversing with. And Jesus is talking to that tree. And that, 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 he, he's, he's rebuking the tree. Why? This tree is behaving abnormally. There's something wrong with this tree. If a fig tree it's not in season. Why is he carrying leaves? Who gave you permission? This is an abnormal behavior. Anything in your life that Satan has positioned to behave abnormally, I change it today. I say to the church here before, again and again, when life is a picture of contradictions, a mystery is at work. This is a beautiful girl, well educated, she is godly. She's got a good job, and yet no husband wants to come near her. Something is wrong somewhere. This is a young man. He's talented. 
He went to school, graduated very well. His brain is working very fine. He's somebody of character. He can't get a job. Something is very wrong. This is a woman living a modest life, respects the husband, and keeps herself for the, for the Lord and for the husband. She's decent. She's beautiful. Her husband is cheating on her. Something is wrong. Anytime life is a picture of contradictions, a mystery is at work. You know, the people of Jericho came to Elisha, and they say, man of God, our city is beautiful. Second Kings 2 verse 19. They say, this city is beautiful. It's pleasant, as my Lord says. But the water is not, and the ground is barren. City beautiful. Water is dirty. It's creating problems, and people are barren all over the city. What did Elisha do? Elisha said, put a little, get me a, a, a brand new plate. They brought it. He said, put salt in it. They put salt in it. The Bible says, and Elisha went right to the riverside and looked at the fountain of the water and poured salt on it and declared from today, this city is healed. They were talking about city. They were talking about women barren. They are talking about businesses now. Elisha went to the riverside to speak to the mysterious power that is causing what they were experiencing. I don't care what tree God what we've experienced in this season. We curse it as a church. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And we command right now, destinies arise. And in your family, it could be an ancestral curse. It could be a witchcraft attack. It could be an occult assault. It could be a human agent. It could be a demonic altar. Whatever is sponsoring what you are going through, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke it now. And I command today, restoration. Lift your right hand and shout restoration. Lift your voice and shout restoration. Declare boldly and say restoration. Let me hear you say, I am restored. I am restored. I am restored. I am restored. Hear this. A few months ago, I was praying. I've never thought of this before. Nobody ever have heard have said that to me. In the vision in prayer, I saw men with physical with wings in that vision. It was wings attached to their shoulders as if there are angels about to fly. These are men, heavy men. And they were flapping the wings about to fly. But I saw huge chains on their legs tied and tethered to something. Brothers and sisters, they were flapping their wings. They couldn't fly. Because even though they had wings, something was binding them. There may be somebody there. You have a wing of degrees, first and second and third, but something is binding you. You may be there. You have character, but something is binding you. You have connections. Something is binding you. You have opportunities. Something is binding you. God sent me into your house today to tell you that curse is broken. That spell is broken. That darkness is broken. That evil is broken. Business rise. Career rise rise, relationship rise, spirituality rise, ministry rise in the name of Jesus Christ from today, darkness is over I see you take charge, I see you become what you are called to become in the name of Jesus and this takes me to the final point, men of faith don't wait for God to create their possibilities, men of faith command possibilities by the spoken word men of faith don't wait for God to command their possibilities. Men of faith command their possibilities by the spoken word. What did Jesus do when he saw the fig tree messing up? He rebuked the fig tree. When Peter reminded him, Jesus said, If you shall say to this mountain, He didn't say pray and say to God, Please talk to the mountain. He didn't say ask God, talk to the fig tree. He said, If you shall say. If you shall say, if you shall say, if you shall say. In the next five minutes, we're going to say something before we take the communion. And as you say it, that thing will move. Jeremiah chapter 1, 9 to 10. Jeremiah chapter 1, 9 to 10. He said, the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, behold, I'll put my words in thy mouth. Alo goda, lika kokarata, jatiyam brokon tarabaha, le eko tototo. If God puts his word in my mouth and I speak the word of God, will he carry the same power as the word in the mouth of God? Think about it. If God took his word and put it in my mouth and commands me to speak it, if I speak it, will he carry the same power as that word in the mouth of God? 
Of course, the answer is yes. It's the word of God. It's the word of God. He put his word in my mouth. What did he say? He says, see, I have this day sent thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Ah, He put his word in my mouth and he said to me, you can do this. You can break the yoke. You can cut down the darkness. You can build. You can plant. You can overthrow. Hey, Shato Talata, in the name of Jesus Christ, anything standing on your way by the word in your mouth is time to throw them down. Any power of hell, any walk of witchcraft, any hand of darkness, it is time to turn things around. Now, hear me. If you're not yet born again, what a season to give your heart to Jesus. What a time to be born again. Please pray with me and say, Jesus, forgive my sin. I believe you are the son of God. You died for me and rose from the dead. Take over my life. I will serve you from today to the rest of my days. Amen. Did you pray that prayer? Life entered you. Grace entered you. The glory of God came upon your life. And from this moment, you will see his hand. You will see his grace. You will see his power. You will see his glory. I welcome you.